Hi, welcome back to Way of the Wrench. I just finished picking up some sheets of MDF for the sides of our Raspberry Pi Arcade. And in today's very special episode, I'm gonna show you guys how to use SketchUp online to design your sides. And um, we're also gonna talk about the different restrictions and constraints uh, when you design it to make sure you can fit through doors and that kind of thing. So today's episode starts right now. free version of SketchUp online. Uh, we're going to jump right into it. I'm not going to show you every single tool and function in here. I'm just going to show you what you need to uh, make your arcade and um, be really short and sweet. So let's jump right to it. We're going to go to the line drawing. Left click on that and when you left click once, you can click it once, you'll notice that it starts drawing already. And there's a couple snap functions you can use. So if you want to stick with this green um, x-axis once the your drawing or your line goes green that means you are perpendicular or sorry parallel with uh, the green axis and you can go the other way or you can be uh, per parallel with the red either way or you can be up with the blue axis z-axis or down uh, so the next thing is instead of trying to just draw it accurately if you look at the bottom right hand corner you can kind of go slowly and adjust it much better way is just simply typing in what you need. So the first thing we're going to make is the top control panel and it is 36 inches and just press enter and it'll automatically go to the length and then I want to draw perpendicular to that so I'm going to use the snap functions once again so that I'm and if I keep it on that red axis then that means whatever length it will still be on that red axis and perpendicular so the control panel for me is 20 inches and then I can follow the green and type in the 36 or you can use a snap function where you just hang on for a couple seconds to that endpoint and as you draw it over you can see that red line and then it shows you green so that's going to be right perpendicular with that and then you can just finish it up now you'll notice that when you finish up um, a surface it will automatically put a fill it in for you and so we're going to use this now the next thing to be able to do anything here is we want to be able to um, zoom in and zoom out so the third wheel uh, third mouse wheel button on your mouse if you roll wherever you have your mouse and you roll forward it will zoom in on that point or it will zoom out if you go back and so you can zoom in and away depending where your cursor is and so it's a good way of centering uh, what you're looking at all right now the next thing you can do to try to help um, see what you're doing is if you hold down the third wheel mouse button wherever you put your cursor you can go to the left and to the right to turn it pivot it that way or you can go up and down so that way you can kind of look at a flat surface etc and if you need to go more you just start again and do it again so now I'm kind of trying to look at it straight on now more uh, just to, to double check these to see if it's right and to show you next function we've got a tape measure so we can check something here just to make sure hover over a point click it and you can see it's measuring and if I go to the end here that is 36 inches or three feet you can press escape just to cancel that and start a new one and this one's supposed to be 20 inches so that's one foot eight inches perfect so we're good to go all right now uh, this is the rough cut dimensions of what this would be. Um, my control panel has some different shapes to it, so we're going to do that now. All right, we're going to go back to our line drawing, and if you go right to the middle of it, you'll see it hover and it changes to midpoint. So I'm going to click on this, and once again, I'm going to stay on my line, so it says on edge. And I know the front here is 12 inches of a flat section, and then there's an angled piece here at the end for 12 inches, and, and same thing on the left side. So I'm going to go over half that 12 inches, stay on the edge, and type in 6 inches. So I put a point right there. Now I'm going to go over here, click there, and I went my design an inch and a half up. So on the edge, 1.5 inches. So now I've got that point and that point. 
All right, and so the next tool I'm going to use is this up here, just to select. I have now split this surface into two surfaces, so I can actually click this, and I don't want that on mine, so I'm going to delete it, press the delete key. I don't want this edge or that. So now I've got the one side finished up. So I'm just going to quickly repeat for the other side. I know from here to here it's 12 inches, so I'll put it on the edge. Type out 12 inches, enter. Same thing here, go on the edge and go up 1.5 inches. Then just connect the two, just like we did before. Back to our select tool. Grab the surface, you'll notice that the surface when you select changes to the little blue dots. Grab the one edge, highlights blue when you've selected it, delete. All right, now, next thing I've got is I went from this point and I skinnied this uh, part side here that was next to the monitor down to 33 inches. So back to our line tool and grab the midpoint and half of 33 is going to be 16 and a half. So I'm going to click there, go on my edge, 16.5. Do that again over here, 16.5. And so now I can go from that to this point and that one to this point. And then I'll go back to our select and much the same select surface, delete, select the lines, there we go. Alright, so this is the outer profile of my control panel. The only thing that's different is I had a radius in here of about uh, one inch. So uh, I'm going to use this tool first, but it's way easier when you actually have the two points for the starting of the arc. So back to our line tool, I'm going to go here and measure, stay on the on edge. Type in one, go back there, go on to this edge, type in one. Might as well do the same over here because it's going to be repeated. And you can also notice that there's a green line there that's popping and it's basically saying that it is parallel from the other spot I just put. So there's another kind of quick way we can just add that one. And then same thing this way. And it wants to pop up to that corner, but I don't want that. So I'm going to go just over on edge and type in one. Now that we've got those two points right there, we can use uh, our two point arc. And I'm going to zoom in a bit so we can see what we're doing. There's one point. There's the other point. And then the third point you have to click, but you get to select where it goes. So what I'm going to do is go like this. And as I get closer, you see that it actually points out as tangent. So that's the one I want. So another click. And I do the same thing over here. One click there, two clicks there, and a third click gives me the, what I want. Back to our select tool. Select that little mini surface that we've trimmed or separated. Delete it. Delete those little one inch lines we made. Zoom out and zoom back into the other side. Select that surface. Delete. Delete. All right, now that we have uh, the finished profile of what the top control panel looks like, if I rotate it on here, you're going to see that it's actually just still like a 2D thing. There's no height on it, there's no thickness to represent my 5 8 uh, or 0.625 inch uh, piece of MDF. So now we're going to use our next tool. We're going to go over to our push pull tool and it'll Highlight with the blue dots again the surface you're wanting to do and you left click on it and you can push it down or you can pull it up it's really your own preference in this case I'm just going to leave it up what I do is I just come up away from it and same thing I can type in the exact um, dimension that I want so I want 5 8 0.625 and there is our final thing okay now now that we have one of these things finished It'd be a really handy thing to make this a complete thing and I'll show you what I mean. So if I go back to our select tool and when you're selecting things you've got two options. So this looks like one piece but it's actually made up of a bunch of stuff and so if I left click and drag a window over some of this stuff you'll notice that it only selected when I went to the right with the window anything that was completely surrounded by that box. 
So I'll show you again. If I go like this, it only sticks that. But if I go like this to the left, it's trying to select anything that even a little bit of it was in the box. Um, so something useful for when you're selecting things in the future. For me, when I'm drawing, I usually try to do it where I've got lots of space, so it doesn't really matter which way I go, but uh, all of it is selected. Now to make it one solid thing, I'm going to right click after I've selected on it, and I'm going to say make a component. And you're going to give it a name so that you know what you've called it. Control panel, and I already have one in here somewhere, so I'm going to take, call this demo for you guys. And you can do some uh, other things in here, but we're not going to get into that. Click OK. So now what that has done is anything getting clicked on here will now select the whole piece as its one piece. Um, so if you want to move something, then uh, it will move everything. So it's kind of useful so things that don't get um, damaged in case you select the top surface and start moving it and tweaking it. Um, so that's a good thing to have. Now if you want to go in and edit it, you have to double left click and then you can actually select this individual surfaces. Um, another really handy tool about making this a component is if you have two or more of the same thing to make, you can just quickly repeat it. Um, as many times as you want and if you make a change on one of them all of them will get changed at the same time all right so for now we're done the control panel so let's move on to another piece here um, and let's just move this out of the way for the time being so the move tool is down here you can select anywhere you want just if you're moving things out of the way to see something or you can go right in on a spot and you can move it to a new spot based off of where you want to put that spot. So that comes in handy when you're trying to place things. All right, now the next thing is drawing our bottom panel. So I'm gonna go through this a little quicker and I may even speed this up when I get into Adobe Premiere. just a touch over and notice that you can move up in any axis you just have to find the axis and you can scroll it away put that over there so you know what we don't have to move it because we're going to use this to make the next pieces just to make it a little faster so select select it off so it kicks that off <clears throat> all right some very simple pieces to make now the front piece is going to be 12 inches by 3 inch high. So we're going to use this just to help us draw this real quick. So start there. We're going to go in the direction on the red on the face. And we have to go 0.65 for the thickness of the MDF. And that's the end of it at 12 inches away. So I'm going to just use that to get me a perpendicular. There's the red line. Okay, it's still wanting to draw, so I'm going to go to that point, and then because I want to make a new face, uh, I'll have to go all the way to the other side. Okay, and when there's a face on top of a face, it kind of does a weird kind of smear look to it, um, but there is a second surface there. So now we do back to the push push pull, push pull tool and highlight the surface, and I'm going to go up, and in this case, instead of going up 0.65, I want to go up the height, which is three inches. All right, so now there's the front control panel done. Um, now I am going to have a hard time trying to select this and making a component with this in the way. So now you kind of get to see what this moves about. So I'm going to move it just out of the way. Go back to my select tool. Oh, I am not completely done on this thing. So 
those of you that have watched the video so far know that I have a 10 degree angle on this control panel going like this. So the next thing I need to do is make an angle. So down here in your measuring tools is a protractor. So this will pop to whatever angle you put it at. So I want it on there. And the way this protractor works is you select the plane that you want to measure from and then you make the angle that you want. And once again, instead of setting it, I can just type it and it'll pop into the bottom right. So I want a 10 degree angle. Okay, and that has made a little set there for me. Okay, now we're back to our line tool. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So now I have, and this isn't a line, it's basically just a guideline that we've created that it'll snap to. So I'm gonna make another little mini surface here. So from the corner to the top, to there, down and back up and now there should be a little surface here that we can extrude out so back to our push pull tool select that surface and go all the way through so I could push it out if I wanted to draw something funky but in this case I actually want to remove it and I want to remove it all the way out so I go all the way back until it says it's basically gone at one foot and you'll notice that there's nothing there so it just disappears so now I have a nice 10 degree angle on that and I don't really need this anymore. The guideline that I made with the protractor, so I'm going to delete that because it starts to look a little messy. Alright. So now I'm going to make this another component. So I'm going to go back to my select tool, select it, right click, make a component. And I'm going to call this control panel front. Okay. All right. So now uh, I'm going to show you just real quick that I can move this with um, some accuracy. So when we make this an assembly drawing after, you'll be able to um, see it all together. So if I want this point to be right there where it would normally sit, I can select here. And now when I move it, I'm moving the cursor to where I want it to be, and it snaps perfectly in place exactly where it would live when we're all done here. Okay. All right. Now, let's make this right side here. Back to our pen tool. So now we're going to draw from there to there to this corner. I want to go up on the edge, 5 8, and back to that corner. And then that should give me another surface to push, pull, extrude. There it is there. Okay. And in this case, we're going to go three inches. Oh, you know what? I made a mistake, but this is good for you guys. You get a little learning tool here. If you make a mistake, uh, hotkey, control Z, or down here, you can go undo or redo. Uh, I actually forgot that I have to draw the side here first. There's a piece of MDF on the side that goes up to the front. So delete, one, two, three, four, and those are those lines I made for those all gone. All right, so we're gonna turn this and we'll do one of the sides here instead. Back to here. Rotated a bit so we can see. Go up on the edge, 0.625. Go to the bottom. And back. Okay, and now push pull, grab that surface, and we're going to pull up. And in this case, the highest it goes up to at the back of the panel is 6.5, six and a half inches. Okay, and then we know that there's a 10 degree angle there uh, or another way of doing it is there's a three inch thing so we'll probably just do that that's just as simple go up on the edge three inches which is right there zoom out zoom 
Zoom in, and you gotta make sure that you click the right points because you can put a line through the piece instead of the side. And because we want to extrude that whole thing out, we're gonna just close it up. Okay, and back to our push pull tool, grab that surface and drag it all the way through so it disappears. Alright, let's see if we can toss this guy here too. I'm not sure what happened there, but it just needs a line to split it. It's literally telling us that. So, once I've drawn that line, I should be able to select. So the reason why this is not working is because this is at that front angle. If it's not a square perpendicular piece when you're doing your push pulls, it um, runs into errors. So another way of doing this would be, uh, first of all, let's just uh, undo a bunch of stuff here. Okay, and I'm going to go back to redo. And I'll show you another way of doing this. So if I go here and make my three inch line, so I've got a point there, I can actually manipulate the surface. So remember when I was talking about making a component, why it's useful, because if I select one piece of this and I move it, it'll make it awkward. So if I go here and I select that edge and I go to the move tool, I can grab this and I can bring it down to where my point is, right like that. And it looks a little funky, but it's worked. Okay, just to double check some stuff. Three inches, yep. By six and a half. Yeah, we're golden. Okay, so there's another piece done. Let's just make sure the other side's okay. Uh, for some reason, there's a little extra line here. And we can't delete that. I'm sure it doesn't matter though. All right. Now that is not a component yet. So if I grab it and move it, we're going to have issues. So once again, select this component, move it, just take it out of the way. And then I can take my selection tool, grab that piece, right click, make it a component. We'll call this one uh, control panel right. Alright, and then we can put this all back together. I'll grab this, move, move it closer so I can actually see what I'm selecting. Now that I got it closer, I will move that corner. We'll zoom in and put it right like that, and we're literally right back to where we were with everything. So now we can do the same thing. on this one and this time a little quicker alright click on the end we're gonna go in 0.65 on edge 0.65 and then straight across to the other guy okay push pull tool Grab that surface and go up six and a half inches. Come over here, select this edge that we want to manipulate. Oh, we got to have that three inch put up. Otherwise, we got nothing to accurately put it up to. So make sure it's on the edge, three inches. Back to our move. Grab that edge and bring that down on the blue axis till it snaps on that green point. There we go, and once again, if we're you know, not feeling confident, it's not super obvious, we can just quickly check. So six and a half, that's good. Three inches, there we go. Compare it with the other side, it looks pretty good. Okay, and then once again, I wanna make that a component so I can do what I want with this thing without 
things moving off and being crazy. Select a piece, right click, and we'll make this the control panel left. Demo. All right, so we'll select this, move it back into view so we can see a little better, and we want that to that corner. All right, we're coming along here. Uh, at this point, let's do the back one. It's pretty easy. This will be super easy. All right, we're going to move this around. Back to our pen tool, into the corner. Stay on the edge, 0.65. Over to the other side, up 0.65. And straight through to the other side. Back to our push-pull tool, grab that new surface and go up. And we should have the option to snap right to that corner which is okay, that's what we want. And you'll see there's a little bit there extra, but that's okay. The reason why that's there is because we haven't put the 10 degree angle on it. All right, okay, so now we're gonna redo the um, manipulating of that edge here so that it's down with that. Back to our select tool, we want to manipulate this whole edge, move it, and now if I select right there, I'm gonna move that whole edge down Still on the blue axis there, so I'm not changing anything a uh, different way. And now, that's at a 10 degree angle and it's completely flush all the way across. Okay, there's the back panel done. And same thing, we're going to move some stuff out of the way here so that we can make this a component. And then if I select off of it, it'll get rid of that component blue lines. And there we go. Okay, a lot of this is done. We just got two more to do. Now this one is the most complicated piece and it was kind of a pain to make in wood uh, because I had some compound angles here. But it's not too bad when we're doing it here. So right there to there, there there still wanting to draw so I'll keep it on the edge 0.625 and then just finish it back up to that corner and back to our push pull extrude it's a little hard to see the surface so I'm going to just change there. there we go and I could bring it up to there but if you look uh, it, the back parts a little higher so we're going to go to there and let's take a look at that. Okay, now you can see that I probably should have brought it up even higher to match there. So what I'll do is I will undo Control Z and I'll try it again, but this time I'm gonna go up to that surface there. Okay, so now I've got some surfaces that I try to blend in here. So I'm gonna go back to my selection tool and I want to Start with this guy. So I'm going to do um, that edge. I'm going to bring it down from that corner here to go to there. So that looks perfect. And let's see what it looks like over on this side. Okay, so the angle's there, but it's got to come down. So what we're going to do is grab that surface now. 
move it down to there. So there you go, you can see that's nicely in line now. And same thing, I want to make sure that that's a component, so I'm going to move everything away. Now, if I hold Shift, I can select multiple things, and then if I press Move, I can move them all the way at once. Alright, select that, right click, make component, I call this control panel right demo. And then I can go back up here and select all of that at once. Go the other direction, direction so it uh, selects everything there. Move. I'll start by just getting it close. And then I can zoom in and actually pick a point where I want it to be. Alright, something glitched. I think because I called the name of something else and it replaced it. So I'm going to go uh, Control Z until I figure out what happened there. Looks like I maybe didn't, just didn't select it. Alright, it still doesn't think it's a component, so I've gone back to where it's not a component. Make a component. Control panel right side. Alright, so now I can select all of that. I'm going to move it back and find a spot that we can locate this with. And it's back. All right, there's that side done. We got one more side to do here. Okay, so there is the bottom part of our control panel. So that's going to hold all our Raspberry Pi and all the uh, internal stuff. Now I'm not going to go in and do all the holes for the computer fans and all the USB pass-throughs and the electrical conduit. Um, so it doesn't need that. This is just to figure out what we're going to make for the actual stand-up part for our arcade. But what we can do now, we have this finished component over here. So let's put it on top. So let's get it over here first, and I think we're going to have to rotate it. So yeah, if you look at it, it's straight up in the air. So we got to change that. So what I'm going to do is pull it up in the air first. And we know we want it uh, 10 degrees. So we're going to go back to our move tool, and this time we're going to use a new tool called rotate. So click on that. And rotate works a lot like the protractor, so you select your pivot point. And in this case, I want it to be the bottom right corner. And once again, you select the line that you want to be um, angling from. And then the next one is the angle that you're placing it at. So you can see it almost looks like it's on a hinge already. Uh, so down here, and then I want it to be 10 degrees, press enter. Okay, and it's all still selected, so now we're going to just change from the rotate to our move. And this is supposed to be flush with the back with the one inch overhang on the front. So zoom in here to get a little better view on the corner right there. Rotate it. 
rotate it and get it in a better position so I can see it. And that should be right there. Okay, let's deselect it so we can see what's going on. Alright, so it looks like my dimensions that I did my control panel are a little off, so then I must be a little bit more than 10 minute, 10 degrees. So, another thing I can do is, uh, now that it's touching on the corner here, we can select this piece, go back to our rotate tool, put it back on the very corner of that piece. And we need to specify the rotate angle. And then just rotate it and use the, the actual bottom of the control panel as a snap. So you can see that it's snapping closed there. So I haven't specified that it's in the middle. That's one thing that's going on here. So I'm going to use a line tool. Drop to there. To that. So I've got something to specify from the middle of that to the middle of that. Now I'm back to select. Move. And I'm going to move. that to the center and all right so this control panel is kind of tilted this way so we need to figure out how to rotate that straight up so select our piece Hmm. That's there. I'm going to select the end of it. And then we can rotate it. And I want it flush with that. There we go. I'm not really sure how that happened. I must have clicked on it somewhere. But now I'm going to deselect this so you can see. Uh, there is a bit of an angle there. I didn't decide to keep it the 10 degrees back to keep it flush. It's going to be up against the monitor anyway, so it's not a big deal. Um, but flush on the back, there's our one inch overlap all the way across. And that's what our control panel is going to look like. Now, before we actually start um, the actual stand up part so that we have something for this to sit into, I'm going to copy this whole thing uh, and to copy it uh, what you do is you select it so I'm going to select everything here and you go to your move tool and you can select anywhere and when you move away if you press control it will make a copy and so this is pretty useful because then you can have one that you make some modifications on and do different things and you can leave the original. So if you screw up, you can just delete and come back. So now I've got two of these guys. Now, I don't want to have to try to select everything and move it around when I've got a big cabinet. So I'm going to make this other one over here a complete component by itself. Okay, so now it's a group, yet this one over here is completely individual. So this is the one we're going to use for actually doing our design of our stand-up without having anything screw up on it. And then later, when I want to make a exploded view diagram or um, put some dimensions on this for you guys to be able to go and cut this at home, uh, we can do that with this one. So now that we've got that done, um, I kind of struggled to figure out how I was going to do this video. Do I literally make a 20 hour video of me kind of trying to 
do different design things and, and, and work through the whole creative process. And I, I quickly realized that's not going to work. Nobody's going to want to watch that. So what I thought I would do is I would talk about the requirements that I have to design around. And I, those requirements are going to change what this arcade looks like uh, to a certain extent. And then anything after the requirements is purely aesthetics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the requirements. Then I'm going to show you um, how to use SketchUp to draw out the actual panel that I made. And then I thought rather than showing you through all these different kind of creative processes, I would show you um, a bunch of the different versions that I did, all kind of in in order from first to like fifth or sixth, and talk about the revisions and how I changed and why I changed things. I think you'd get a lot more out of that video. Um, so let's get started. So the very first thing uh, that we need to talk about is this arcade machine has to be able to go through doors. So when I did my research, uh, if you look up standard door size, at least in Canada, we're looking up about six feet eight inches high to about 30 to 32 inches in width. I highly, highly recommend that you pick the smallest doorway that uh, into the room that you're going to be putting your arcade cabinet and measure it manually with a tape measure because mine is not that much. And the reason why is the door jam might be these minimums. However, when the door swings open, it might hit the wall and actually the inside edge of the do door might actually stick out a little bit. So I had to trim mine a little bit more than that. And so I decided that my width was 29 inches and um, six foot eight. So uh, that was my thing. So make sure you measure your door jam, depending where you want it to go. Um, so the next thing is the control panel height. So the actual height that this is going to sit in our cabinet. And so you, if you remember a couple of videos back, we messed around when we were designing this, what height would be good. And so um, we had to take that into consideration where the little step this is going to sit into was so that we maintained our good control height, which I believe was 38 inches from the ground up to where our hands were. And the next thing is, what is the angle of the TV? So the TV, when we set this in this cabinet, um, you know, we've got the cocktail cabinets that would be straight flat and we probably don't want this straight 90 degrees up um, that way it'll look like it's right up in your face most traditional arcades are going to have some kind of angle set back so i found that it's the best for me was about a 20 to 30 degree angle layback so in my final design i designed the sides of the cabinet at 20 degree angle and i have the option of basically if it doesn't look right when i make this for real um, i could just set back the monitor at an extra 10 degrees and it would just look like it's got a little bit of side skirt which I'll show a little later. Um, now the other requirement for this is the size of the monitor you're going to use. So for your build uh, you might have to change the dimensions but essentially you could even keep the side panels the same as what I'm designing. Um, you just might have to change uh, the width of the cabinet itself or the width of your TV that you're going to put in. So we're using a 32 inch TV so that's going to be the minimum for that plus the thickness of two, two pieces of the 5 8 thick MDF. So that's going to be one of my requirements to work with as well. Now because I'm going with a digital marquee, I'm also going to have to um, get a, mark, uh, a monitor figured out for that and then design around that. So I have bought one already and I'll show you what I came up with. Uh, best bang for buck, I ended up coming up with this LG 29 inch ultra wide full HD TV. Um, they're pretty reasonably, reasonably priced and you'll see that in the build video at the very end of this. Um, but it's the closest thing that I can get to within a reasonable budget to getting an, a marquee. Now if we look at the marquees you'll notice that they range all over the place but a, an older traditional marquee is quite long uh, as opposed to how high it is. So uh, I've got that with that monitor, I should be able to do that, but I may have some black lines here that yeah, I will have to try to figure out how to not show or display as easy. Um, but if you end up with wider ones, then uh, I think that TV will work pretty good. All right, now that's all the requirements that have to be made. 
beyond that, I can do whatever I want, make it aesthetics. Now, I didn't want to go too crazy over the top and make some funky thing. I still do want it to look like a traditional arcade, so you probably will see that in a lot in the design that I make. All right, so uh, like I said, we're going to make, and I'm going to show you how to draw on any tools and everything I use to make the side panels based off of these requirements. Um, and to, to keep this video short, I'm just going to show you how to do it, and then I will show you my creative process and how I went through about five, six revisions. So first thing, we are up to our pen tool. And just since our control panel is oriented this way, I think I'm just going to start drawing it that way as well. So we're going to stick with the red line there. And with my requirements to fit through, through doorways, I've decided that from the front to back is going to be the side that has to be turned and, and brought into the doorway. So that's going to be limited to 29 inches. All right, and so I want to basically start with a, a big long rectangle of what my uh, ply piece of MDF would be. So this one's going to be end up being six foot six and three sixteenths inches high. Okay, and then back on the red axis, back twenty nine inches and then straight down. Okay, and there's our surface that we get to play with. Now from here, um, to get our 38 inches from the, the bottom to where our hands would be when we're standing, uh, that's gonna end up minus the control panel that goes in here, it's gonna be 33 inches. So from there, make sure it says on edge, 33. Now it's gonna put that green little dot. That's recenter this a little bit. All right, from that green dot, we are in six and a quarter inches. And then we are up 29 and 5 sixteenths, but we're at an angle, so we're back to using our protractor tool. So from that angle, on that axis, we want that angle. Actually, I'm going to change that. So from that corner, on that axis, we want that to go back our 20 degree angle, which is what I decided to set up the TV monitor at. Okay, so now we have a little guideline for that. So we're back to our line tool, back to the corner, and then this thing is up 29 inches and five fifteen sixteenths. Okay. And then from this point, we've got another angle that I decided to go with. So back to our protractor. And from this line, we're up 15 and a half degrees. Okay, back to our line tool. Straight from that corner along that line, we have 11 and 15 sixteenths. Now you may be wondering why did I not pick numbers that are not on 15 sixteenths and things like that. It's uh, after just messing around with what looked right, that's where it ended up. So I did start with whole numbers, but it ended up getting broken up into pretty tiny fractions. All right, and then from there, we're up on the blue axis, or Z axis, for 13 and 7 eighths inches. And then from there, we're back six inches. And then we've got another angle. And on that axis, down. And for whatever reason, this one's 19.9. Go 
goes from there all the way to there. And then you can kind of see our layout here. So time to clean this up a little bit. We don't need these anymore. So I'm going to delete those. Okay, and we don't need this surface anymore. So we're going to get rid of that. Don't need that line. Don't need that line, that surface, or those. So now you can kind of start to see what this thing's going to look like. And this control panel is going to sit up in here and come off of this way. Now, because this is a removable panel, it's going to be quite removable. Um, it will be have to be removed so that we can get this through a doorway. Uh, but that shouldn't be a big deal. Basically, just unlock the top, uh, hinge up the lid, undo a couple wing nuts, and then this thing will come off and go through doorways. Now, at this point, um, if you're going to do the drawings, when you do your uh, glue blocks or your battens uh, and for your side pieces that go in between here, and for me, I want to have a little bit of um, kind of like overhang on the side pieces, about half an inch, I highly recommend that you figure out where your dimensions are going to be for those with these corners being square, because it's a lot easier to take dimensions off of the square. Uh, but because I already know what I've got, um, what I'm going to do is basically just show you how to do some kind of aesthetic curves to this because this looks very chunky and just square. And we might as well do that before we start extruding this out into our 5 8 thick piece of MDF. So if I go back to our line tool, uh, this and this is going to be a straight, but we start adding curves here, 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 there, there, and the front and back. So I decided that what looked good for me was a three quarter inch radius. So if you zoom in on one of these, click there, make it go on edge and 0.75. Another corner point on that edge, 0.75. And then you go back to your two point curve, two point arc, sorry. Find your point, find your point and then make sure that it looks right and get the little purple tangent at vertex. Click there and then you can see it automatically makes your surface. So to clean that up, all you have to do is go in there and just delete those lines. And at that point it figures that's what the way it was from original. So like I said, it, trial and error, I figured that one looked about the best. Uh, so I'm gonna quickly do all of these in, in order here. So there is the completed side panel of what I ended up doing as a final design and you can see it's still just like 2D. So if we want to expand that out and we'll select the surface, push pull, make sure the surface is selected, it can go either way, it doesn't really matter, 0.65 for the thickness of our MDF and there we have our one completed panel for right or left. Since it's basically the same part, um, we can just call it side panel. So we're going to do our component thing like we were talking about earlier. Make it a component and we'll call this right side cabinet. select off and select anywhere on it you can see that it now comes up as a component all right now that we have the side finished uh, we can make a copy of this and make it left and right and they're both exactly the same so um, 
we could just leave them exactly the same. So if we decide to make any changes, uh, it makes the changes in both of them, or we could make one unique after you copy it. It's really up to you. Um, but so to start getting this kind of looking like an actual cabinet, we need to draw something between the two left and rights. So we're going to draw the bottom control panel. So uh, keeping with the green axis, we want something 31. Three quarter inches wide, and because I want a little bit of half inch overhang on the front and back of the arcade, the 29 inches is going to turn into 28 inches for this guy. And we can do the hover over the endpoint to get that dotted red line to pop up. And when it's dotted red and green, that means I'm perpendicular. And close it up. And because we want to simulate this is five eighths. Thick MDF, 0.625, and just like we've been doing everything else, we're going to select it and make it a component. And we'll call this bottom control panel demo. All right, now that we have that, we can move this thing next to where it would sit. Now because this is a three-quarter inch, I gotta select. So select the component and then double click it so that you can go in. You'll see this dashed black box around it. That means I can go in and edit it. And so whatever I draw is gonna stay put. So on the red axis, 0.5 inches. Same thing we just did. Hover over that, straight blue line. Now we got a little funky surface there, but we don't need it. That's just not going to make, uh, when we actually make it out of wood, it won't be there. All right, so now that I've got something to zoom in and move this on, we're going to select out of it, select the whole thing, and then we're going to go move. And now that we have that spot where we want that plywood to sit, Click right there, zoom out so we can see what we're doing. All right, so right there. All right, now essentially everything between this is going to be the same width as this as well. All right, so now we're at it. We're going to select this again, and now we're going to want to move it, but to be able to put it on this other side. And while we do that, we can also do the control function to basically keep the same thing in its place. So just got to rotate this, and I just realized we're going to have to do the same addition on the other side. on the red axis, 0.5. Hover over there for a couple seconds so we can get the dashed and the blue. There we go. So I'll select out, select a component, move it. And this time we're going to select this side. And we want it to stay there and make a duplicate. So if we press control, there's our duplicate that stays. And we can place the new one right across where it's supposed to sit. So now at this option, you can leave it like this so that each of these are both the same thing. So anything I change to this will transfer over to that. Uh, it's really up to you. Um, for now, I'm going to leave it. Actually, it might be easier if I start doing something like dimensioning or whatever later. So another way, if I haven't shown you already, is you can just make unique, and it becomes its own component so that if you make changes to it, it won't actually affect it. All right. So now, 
all you have to do is go through and fill in wherever you want to put in between here. Now these this width that we've measured out here, the 31 and 3 quarter inches, is going to be the same for the front panel, for the ledge for the control panel to sit on, for the plywood for our marquee, for the top piece in here, our overhang that's going to have our speakers, for our actual marquee bezel, top piece, angled back piece, and the back piece including our hinges and doors. I want to show you what I ended up with uh, and it'll make it a little easier to talk about it as well. So when I made my first version of this, this is what I came up with. So this would have been a harder angle. This is 30 degrees and I wasn't happy with how skinny this part here looked. It looked too weak to me, a little top heavy, and that is displaying the whole monitor that you would see with that LG Ultra Wide um, without a marquee at all. So I wasn't really happy, mostly because of this. And then there were some other issues as well. One of the issues was because I'm I have to have the 32 inch TV in there and this is where the the MDF is going to sit, you'll notice that when I put the control panel in here that there was a little bit of an overlap here. So a little bit of an, uh, an oversight on my part, but um, I did want to have the solid wood piece uh, designed in front of me so that I knew that I would be comfortable playing on it first. So I just had to have some unique idea to kind of hide this so it didn't have that little spot, uh, mostly because if I put on the T molding in here, there would be a little bit of an issue in there too. So um, that was the first issues that I came up with. So I changed, I revised my drawings and I drew another one with a couple changes. So this one here is the same angle of the TV, but I wondered if there would have been um, kind of like some light blocking effect if I put kind of like these little blinders on the side here, which I kind of like the idea of, but I wasn't sure about how they looked. Uh, that gave me the ability to kind of thicken up this area here, and then I, I felt that looked a little better. And then in this version of the marquee, I ended up drawing a bezel for the marquee uh, so that it would block part of the TV screen of the TV monitor, so that it would be more like a traditional size marquee. Um, and then when you insert the photos for the marquee, you would basically stretch the corners of the marquee out so that it would fit this dimension. So I kind of like that a little bit as well. Um, still had the problem here though that I wasn't happy about. And in this one, I started putting in, also both of these, I started putting in some images just to help me kind of visualize what these would look like. Uh, and I will show that in a second. And I also started playing with some different colors in here, as you can see, just to get them closer to it, and, and different colors of T-molding. So this is supposed to simulate chrome T-molding, and different color schemes I'm playing around with. Okay, so that was the second version of it. And then third version, I changed up the theme, just to show my daughter as well. This is her favorite game. Um, so some changes on this. I didn't like how simple and flat and flush everything was on this, so I decided that it looked actually better with a little bit of um, overlap on these side plates. So this is the, the half inch overlap. And then uh, it kind of became apparent that if I'm doing that overlap, these sharp edges didn't look all that great either. And then these are essentially the same cabinet, except for the overlap. Um, I played with the marquee a little bit, so this marquee, is the full size of the 29 inch ultra wide monitor and then I, th I thought what if the, the the background that didn't have the actual marquee the original artwork was either white or black um, so you could show the proper size of the marquee originally intended but have the spot where there's no artwork just blend into whatever the cabinet was so that's why I made it white but I think it would have to be a black cabinet for that to work uh, could be wrong though you could be able to change the background to white 
So this is the full-size monitor marquee for the uh, digital marquee uh, with a half inch overlap over everything. And then the other thing that I changed on this is rather than have this spot right there and kind of a chunky square kind of looking to it, I thought why not just extend this all the way down. And when I did that I noticed that it still missed the control panel. So now it, it looks a little bit more flush, no chunky square cut out there and the control panel kind of fits in there nicely and there still is a little bit of space. It's not very much, uh, so you probably won't even see that too much when it's assembled. Now you can see that there's the half inch overlap around all the boxes here. Okay, and then the next version, uh, I went back to black again, and I started curving some of these sharp corners, and I think that really did the trick. This looks quite professional and quite uh, original, how they used to be, with a little bit of overlap, a little bit of curved corners. And on this one, I'm simulating black paint with chrome T-molding and showcasing kind of like one of my favorites uh, Dungeons and Dragons back in the day uh, pretty cool game so I was pretty happy with this style uh, I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be the last revision of it um, I think it looks pretty good sizing wise etc and so basically after that I started just duplicating the whole thing as a component and starting to play with some theme ideas. Uh, there's a you know, theme idea for Stranger Things. And it's very cool artwork. I do have a very large control panel surface. Um, so it's just a matter of finding something that fits and looks good. It's hard because if you do a theme, a set theme like Stranger Things, then when you play a different game on it, it doesn't look exactly right, especially with the digital marquee. So that was a Stranger Things one. Um, back to the Dungeons and Dragons theme. This uh, game was re-released uh, a bunch of years after uh, for PS3, and they called it Chronicles. Uh, so this is some of the artwork from there, and I actually quite like the artwork on this. Had to play around with fitting it all, and then I played around with the idea of putting in like a aluminum chrome kick plate. So if you're standing at the machine, you're not uh, scuffing up all the artwork and dinging it up. And once again, they've got some very cool artwork that they re-released for the game. And I also changed the team molding color to red on this one. Give it a different look. So let me know down in the comments what you think about the colors, uh, color schemes and artwork. thinking about Lord of the Rings, Hobbit style, especially the uh, Balrog uh, scene. And more some traditional D&D art. I found a guy on Pinterest that's doing stained glass uh, artwork. I thought that would be pretty awesome for a control panel. So I was just trying it out and seeing what it looks like. And then same guy uh, with one of his different artworks for the Mines of Moria. It's all the way from the entrance and down and through. Uh, this is quite a cool artwork. Uh, this would definitely work. All right, now there's probably a bunch of people that are saying, well, wait a second, how did you do all this? So, if we go back to our base model, get this kind of centered up so we can see what it looks like. Uh, to insert colors and in art, you've got materials over here. And you've got all your building materials that you can do. You can search through what they have. So you can do colors, things like that. 
So if you wanted to paint something red, you get a little paint bucket symbol, and wherever you click on a surface, it will change the color to it. Um, so in here, they've got all the colors, uh, but they've also got different kind of patterns and claddings and these kind of things, so it just depends what you're doing. Uh, the, the aluminum checker plate is in metal, so you can see what this thing looks like like that as well. Be able to get this thing looking a little more like what it would look like when you're done. Uh, to throw some graphics on here that you've designed or you found an image or something. Um, first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to select the actual surface. Go up here to the little folder, go to insert. Uh, you're going to have an image already in your computer, so you're going to have to find that and download it or make it. Click here on my computer. Let's use this one for now. I find it easier if you work with material. Alright, there's our image. Some awesome artwork by Capcom. And so you got to have the little paint symbol. Uh, you're going to select it on the end, first point, and then second point. Uh, don't worry about getting it absolutely perfect because you're going to see in a second how we're going to have to change it a bit, and that's really easy to do. So basically, just drop it, and you see it already makes your image there. Now, with this selected, if you right click, you go to texture, you can change the position, and inside of that, you can actually change quite a bit. So if you use your arrow keys, you can actually position this wherever you would like. So if you wanted to have artwork with, you know, like, or her on there, the elf, or you can cycle things around to get basically whatever you want. So you can kind of have a good idea of what kind of image you want. And let's say we want something a little long like this. Now you can see that I'm kind of cutting into the image from the graphic from below. Now if it works for you, that's great. If not, um, you have some tools here to be able to do some stuff. So you can distort this picture uh, by moving and dragging that one. You can scale it, so make the picture bigger or smaller. You can just move the picture and this one is to rotate so you can mess with these you basically just click and drag and you can do whatever you would like so this one is going to be doing more of a rotation on it so it's kind of not what we want at all so I'm going to just drop that and just do back to where it was something might more useful for us might be to scale this so you can see there's quite a bit of changes that we can do and so you just basically just got to figure out what you want showing there's at least three of the guys pretty clear face and then maybe we could change the angles on the other side if we wanted. So if you like that, just press enter. Click away and then you kind of get a view of what this looks like. If I quickly move this out of the way I'll show you how I was able to move this stuff around here. So you can see that I've added the the ledge or the shelf for the control panel. You can see that I've added kind of a backing to this, um, more for it to have the support, but this is probably also going to be cut out so that I can get wires and cables through here. And then there's our marquee. Um, so you'll notice that there's a line here, and I drew that just on these this board here so that it had a midpoint. That way I could line up the back of this control panel. So the back of this control panel is going to have a midpoint line as well. And so to move this control panel that we had made before the beginning of this video, you take your control panel, click it once so that it's, it's in its component form, and then you go to move, find the midpoint, and I'm picking the midpoint at the bottom. And then if you rotate it around to your arcade cabinet that you have made, you kind of have to look through your part figure out where that would be and then click it to drop drop it and then you can see that it's centered 
and yet it's sitting on that shelf and sitting all the way back as far as it'll go. Now another thing that I didn't do is I didn't go into drawing all the control panel buttons and where my trackball is and that. If I was doing this from scratch again I, I might do that that way uh, and the benefit to that would be that I could lay out my graphics a little better and see where you know I'm not putting a trackball button right in the middle of somebody's head or interrupting what's going on uh, for your different artwork. So that is a positive to drawing it digitally uh, beforehand. So something to think about. Okay, so now that we have our side panel uh, designed out, we have to make all of our different panels that go in between these two pieces, uh, like our monitor bezel, our digital marquee bezel, our panel that holds our speakers, uh, the shelf for our control panel, the front panel, the back panel, and all these panels have to have something. So um, a quick way to do this and another tool to learn here would be using our push-pull except we're going to go to the offset. Now when you do this we have to have this surface selected and we have to go into it and select that surface. Okay, So back to our offset tool it says which point so we want it on this side or that side and then by how much. And so we want I want a half inch overlap on mine, so I'm going to put a half inch. And then I actually want to put in uh, another one of these. So I'm going to select that surface now and then offset it by the thickness of the MDF, so 0.65. So now what that's done is it's given us a surface all the way around here, matched all of my profiles. Uh, so that's where the MDF is going to sit. So now all i got to do is basically go in with our line tool and decide where this is all going to get cut. Now there is a couple of changes I have to make here as well. Alright, now that i got this panel, i got to click off of this component. Otherwise every little piece in here is going to be part of it. So I've clicked away from that. So when you've got the little dash lines around it, that thinks all of this and what you're drawing is a component. I don't want to modify this, I want to add other pieces, so i got to select off of it, then I can start making my modifications. So um, this I don't want an overhang here of half an inch, I want it flush up here for the control panel to sit, so I'm going to draw uh, on here, so 0.65 down, that's going to go all the way to the back, and it can connect to that, and it can go up and be basically parallel with the last point I made and then select this back to there. Now I don't want, so I'm selecting back into the component, I don't need you know what, I can just leave that for now, I actually don't need it, but I don't need this that part there, and I don't need that part there, and it's not letting me trim because it's on a different part, so well, it's fine, we'll leave that for now. All right, so now if I select off, I can go in here and select just what I want to add to this next component. So I'm going to select the surface, hold down shift, select that one long line, that one front edge. It's not showing it very good, but it is selected, and then all the way to the end there. Okay, and then if I right click on this, I can make this a component. I'll call this control panel shelf. Okay, so now when I select on it, it's selecting that whole thing there. So now I can go to a push pull tool, select the push pull. select into my part. Now we're going to drag that out and we want 32 inches. So now I have a separate piece here that I can manipulate or modify and it won't affect this part over here. And like I said, to do an explosive view diagram so we can label and dimension this later, this is going to be um, pretty required. Alright, so we can jump into the next guy here.
Alright, so now that I have all of these separate pieces as components, uh, it will be a lot easier to be able to separate and put into like an exploded view diagram so I can see how the parts go together and how I can dimension them as well. So that'll be the next step right here. So when you're doing the exploded view diagram, the basic premise is select the part you want to move, select a corner, select the move function, and then decide which axis you want to go on. So for me, for this one here, I'm going to move it on the green axis. And then select whatever piece you want to move next. This one's going to be the red axis. This one's going to be red axis as well. Alright, so the next step is just basically trying to find a angle that you can show everything. Uh, and it's for just trying to help make sense of where these pieces are going. Um, so it, just move it around until you can figure out something that works for you to figure out how this all goes together. Now obviously if you spray it, spread it all too far apart then it doesn't make any sense to the relation. Uh, because of all the angles and all the little pieces in here, it does make it a little um, hard to figure out what's what, so we do kind of need an angle here that you can see all of the parts. And I think for in this case an exploded view diagram is just going to be good for kind of showing in relation to where the parts are. And um, it would be better to kind of just move these around into a flat position and label and dimension them um, after. So I think the next logical step would be basically dimensioning these pieces out. Um, like I said, I think dimensioning it as an exploded view diagram is going to be a big, of, a bit of a hassle. So I think what I'm going to do next is I'm basically just going to move these um, away from each other, and so that I can label them and dimension them for you guys. So you can use the dimension tool just to click off what the component is. And here's the dimension tab. So we know that all these pieces are going to be 5 8 thick. So we basically just need the length and width of this. So you click one length for the one dimension to measure from, then the other one, and then you have the option of um, displaying where you want this. So put it off a little bit so you can see what you're doing.
All right, that's a wrap on another very special episode of Way of the Wrench. Um, hopefully this video was useful for you, either through helping you um, start using SketchUp online or um, being able to talk you through the various constraints on designing your very own arcade cabinet. Um, please comment down below, uh, help me improve, help me figure out what you would like to see in future episodes. Um, I will be posting the plans for this arcade cabinet down in the description below, so feel free to use that. And um, please, if you got something out of my videos, or you actually are gonna use my plans and make this, um, please give me a subscribe. I think that I would really appreciate that and it would um, help me boost trying to make more videos for you guys. Uh, next episode is going to be actually cutting up the sides of the arcade cabinet, so I'm really looking forward to that. It's gonna be awesome. Um, so, until next time, see ya.